Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today I'm going to discuss very quickly how you can create a straightforward and manual finisher schedule for your Revit projects. This is a method that I have used previously when things were a little bit tight in time scales. Um, so let's say we are in an early design stage um, in the procurement process, let's say pre-tender. We want to go out for pricing, but we haven't necessarily modeled all the finishes that we want to report via the Revit scheduling. What we can do is we can create a manual room schedule complete with finishes that we input via just text formats to describe the finishes for to go out to pricing to the QS or whatever. So what I'm going to show you basically is taking the example floor plan here on the left, we're going to create a very simple finisher schedule from each of the rooms. Okay. So opening a different file of the same, you can see that we have the same footprint here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is on the right hand side to create the schedule, we're going to right click, we're going to say new schedule. We're going to scroll down to room. Composite rooms. Okay. Schedule building components, that's fine. And we're just going to press OK. So what do we want to appear on the schedule? So in our previous example, we had the number representing the number of the room. We had the room name. So we select name, add that. We had the wall finish, the base finish, meaning the um, I suppose the uh, the skirting board or the coving or whatever descriptor you want to use for the end of the wall. We also had a floor finish and a ceiling finish. Okay, so now that we've added them, we can press OK, and you can see that already we have a populated schedule. You can see that we have our numbers on the left hand side, the room names, the wall finish, the base finish, the floor finish, and ceiling finish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the schedule and I'm going to call it finishers schedule and then I'm going to begin to populate these fields and as you can see these are merely text fields these are not reporting parameters they're merely text fields so we can actually very quickly no matter how tight we are in the project time scale we can turn around a rudimentary finisher schedule for pricing in the early stages of the project I will say that this is not the optimum way of doing it and um, I much prefer to create an actual series of model elements that report correctly per room and actually have a schedule showing the finishes and tags on plan and that kind of thing but this is more for a pre-tender stage if you're under time constraints just to give an overall feeling for what the finishes are going to be so um under wall finish i'm just going to say plaster sorry plasterboard taped and painted um epoxy Paint three number coats uh, and I'll just say RAL XXX for the moment. Okay, so there we've pr produced a wall finish um, text element for the schedule. On the base finish, I'm just going to say epoxy coving to match floor finish. Uh, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to say Mipalam coving on screed to match floor finish um, 150mm high. For the floor finish, I'm going to say 3mm Mipalam Esprit floor finish on concrete. with welded joints, RAL XXX, because I'm not defining a, a color yet. And then under ceiling finish, I'm just going to say Armstrong 600 by 600 ceiling grid TBC. Okay. So I've populated each of these finishes and what's very useful about the schedule when you're creating it is that you actually get a click down. So you may only have to have three or four wall finishes throughout the whole project, but all you need to do is populate three or four of them, and then you can just select from the drop downs as you progress. So as you can see, I'm applying the same finish throughout on in within each room. Very boring building altogether. <laughs> um, so 
now that we've applied our finishes throughout, we can apply the schedule to the sheet. So I'm going to close this dialog here and I'm going to drag the finishing schedule onto the sheet. So we need to do a bit of a tidy and exercise here so it presents correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale back the number. I'm going to increase the room name and then each of the descriptors I'm going to drag out so they take up about three or four lines at max just to neaten up the, the overall presentation. And here you can see we actually have a very, very simple and straightforward finisher schedule for these early project stages that you may not have time to go and model all the elements to report them correctly. Um, so I'm just going to drag it out a bit more. Uh, another thing to note is that we don't actually have this going sequentially. You can see we have 1, 2, 7. So I'm going to double click back into the schedule. And under the sorting and grouping, I'm going to press edit and I'm going to sort by number. And you can see that it will renumber. Um, I do not have a room number 3 because room number three was actually removed in the previous phase in this project and we didn't want to relabel it and there you have it so very simple very straightforward you are merely putting in text elements to represent your finishes you may have a document of finishes already present in an excel format or something like that that you can quickly bring in and populate Another way I like to do this is for the likes of the wall finish, um, you may have variations in the wall finishes around. So let's say we have north, south, east and west walls. They may not all have the same colour, they may not all have the same finishes, they may not have even the same material build-up. So often what I do in this variant is I'll actually create a north, south, east, west um, wall finished per room so that I can give different descriptors for each. And then maybe let's say you have an L-shaped room that had a, a dog leg like this, uh, I would have maybe north, south, east, west, and then a recess finish, because typically the recesses all have the same finish. So that just goes, it gives you an idea of potential variations in the descriptors um, between the walls. So I hope this was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions or comments at all, please let me know, and I'll do my best to, to answer uh, below. If you want a follow-up video um, showing an actual modeling exercise of all the material finishes, tagging and then generating a schedule from the building components um, within the model themselves. I'll be happy to do that. Just please let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye bye.